Well, the title of my sermon tonight is uh, Walk in the Spirit. And the, the part of the chapter I want to start at, and I um, hope you've got your Bibles, we're going to be covering a lot of ground um, tonight in the Scriptures. And uh, so we'll start at Galatians chapter 5. And uh, the verse I want to focus on tonight to use as a starting point is, uh, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit, verse 25. Now, if we want to do great works in these end times, we need to be walking in the Spirit. So my main point I want to make tonight by saying that we need to walk in the Spirit, it's because we want to do great works. And if we want to do the great works in these end times, we need to make sure that we know that we uh, have to walk in the Spirit and how to do that. So um, Daniel chapter 11, talking about the end times, says that, but my people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. And I want to be part of that, that crowd that, that, do, that does the, um, the great exploits. Yeah. So great exploits, that can be a bit, a bit vague. You can think, well, maybe that's doing miracles and raising the dead and all calling down fire. But if you turn over, well, don't turn there, but if you were to go to chapter 12, I'll just read it to you, say so you haven't go there. So Daniel chapter 12, verse 3, gives us a bit of an idea of what these great exploits are. And um, that's what we want to do as, as Christians. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. So if you compare those two scriptures there, you can see doing great exploits is turning people to righteousness, like getting people saved. So I'm more impressed by someone going out there door knocking, getting people saved, and so-called seeing all these miracles and, and healings. That's great if God sees fit to do those things, but the miracles I want to see uh, souls getting saved and great exploits for the kingdom. Okay. So, this, um, back to um, Galatians chapter 5, and verse 25. For a lot of years, it's been a bit of a confusing scripture to me. It says, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. So I'm thinking, well, surely if you live in the Spirit, then you do walk in the Spirit. So well, what's that about? So... It is different, and I think if we can understand that we already live in the Spirit, then that gives us great boldness and faith to then understand that we can also then walk in the Spirit. So I want to start by looking at what it means to live in the Spirit. So turn in your Bibles over to John chapter 3. If you've got a spare finger or, or a bookmark, leave that there in, in Galatians, because we're going to come back to Galatians in a little bit. So John chapter 3, and we'll start in verse 3. So we're going to be looking at, to begin with, what does it mean to live in the Spirit? Okay. So starting at verse 3, it says, Jesus answered and said unto him, and this is Nicodemus, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God, or he's not going to go to heaven. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto, you, unto thee, You must be born again. So we see Nicodemus going to Jesus to find out how to see the kingdom of God, how to go to heaven. And Jesus says, you must be born again. Um, Georgia, can you bring me some fruit? So, verse um, 6 there says, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So we have two, two different things. Every person in the world right now is either in the flesh, born of the flesh, or born of the spirit. So when I was born into the world, I was born in the flesh. So this apple here represents someone's born in the flesh. The problem is that flesh and blood doesn't inherit the kingdom of God, and we're going to look at that in a couple of minutes. So, so when I was born into the world, because I've sinned and come short of the glory of God, and I'm flesh, and, I, and flesh and blood will not inherit the kingdom of God, I'm not going to go to heaven. That's why Jesus said, you must be born again. Okay, you must be born again. So when we're born again, we're born of the Spirit. Okay, so then when I put my faith in Jesus, the death, 
burial and resurrection of Jesus, I become born again, born of the Spirit. And then, so I'm not this apple anymore, I'm now a new creature in Christ, 2 Corinthians 5.17. And now, I'm, this, I'm, I'm over here. I'm no longer in the flesh, I'm now born of the Spirit. Okay? And now I have Christ's righteousness. So this man here is, is the old man now, he's been crucified with Christ. So you're in, got a finger or a bookmark in Galatians chapter 5. And uh, now verse 24 says, And they that are Christ's, so on this orange now, born of the Spirit, I'm Christ. So now that are, so they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. So this flesh, the old man, he's been crucified, so I'm no longer him. He died with Christ on the cross. And uh, through faith in, in the death, burial, resurrection, born again as an orange, as uh, born of the Spirit. So... So this man here has Christ's righteousness and uh, he, he cannot sin. All that he does is pleasing to the Lord. It's, it's in faith, it's um, in its righteousness and uh, it's pleasing to the Lord. So this person here who's born in the Spirit, is a new creature in Christ, cannot sin. So he's going to go to heaven whether he likes it or not. So it doesn't matter if he does good works, bad works, no works. He's still going to go to heaven because he's been born as born of the spirit and that which is born of the spirit is spirit it can't be changed just like when you're born in the flesh you can't go oh, i didn't really want to be born can i be unborn that's too late you're born okay and you must be born again it's just the same with being born in the spirit you're going to um go to heaven okay by 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 having christ's righteousness and let me read to you uh 1 john chapter 3 verse 9 it says whosoever is born of God, so born of God, this new creature over here, doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. So once you're born of God, that new man's going to go to heaven. The flesh and blood of the old man, he's not going to go to heaven. The new man is going to go to heaven. But the problem is, even though we're, we're no longer in the flesh, we still have the flesh. So that's the problem. So if you walk after the new man, you won't be sitting, you'll be walking in, in God's grace, God's power, God's, God's righteousness, but if you choose to walk after the old man still, you can still commit sins, okay? But it won't be the new man committing those sins because, as we just read, he cannot sin. Now, something it's interesting to note that, that in the Word of God, it never once refers to a born-again person as being in the flesh, okay? Because as we saw from the example here, that um, once you're born of the Spirit, you are spirit. You're no longer the flesh. So it never mentions being in the flesh or walking in the flesh. But if you read through um, uh, Romans chapter 8, you'll see often it talks about walking after the flesh. About four or five times it refers to walking after the flesh, not in the flesh. So that's just something interesting there. So as, as a born-again person, we can still we have a choice. Every day we have a choice. I'm going to walk in the Spirit or walk after the flesh. Lydia, can you come and grab these? Save you getting up on it. Just turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. So we're just talking about how we, are, how we live in the Spirit. If you're born again, you live in the Spirit. And uh, turn to, or start at verse 45. It is so in a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. Therefore, uh, there is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was, uh, was made a living soul. The last Adam, which is Jesus, was made a quickening spirit. How be it that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. The first man, which is the person born in the flesh, is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthy, such are, are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such as they also that are heavenly. As we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. So we can see there that just like we bore the, the image of the first man, which is Adam, 
once you're, you're born again, you bear the image of the second man, which is Jesus. And we're no longer in the flesh. This or our old man won't go to heaven. Like when we do sin, it's because we're following after the old man's fill. And the old man's going to fall away and uh, perish, and um, he won't inherit the kingdom of God. So turn to Romans chapter 1. So we're going to talk about how we walk in the Spirit in light of that. So we looked at Romans 5.25, which says, uh, if we live in the Spirit, then also walk in the Spirit. So we can, we've seen here how being born again causes us to then be born of the Spirit, and therefore we, we live in the Spirit. Now we just need to know how to, to walk in the Spirit. So while you turn to Romans uh, chapter 1, uh, let me just read from uh, Romans 8, verse 8 to 9. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so, be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So that makes it even more clearer there. This drives the, the nail home even further. Verse 9, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If, so the condition is, if so be that you have, that you, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, when we receive the Spirit of God, that's when we get saved. So if you're saved, you're no longer in the flesh, you're in the Spirit. You live in the Spirit. And now we just need to learn how to walk in the Spirit. So once you understand that we already live in the Spirit, it gives you great faith to, to, to then be able to, to walk in the Spirit. So you're in Romans chapter 1. So turn to um, verse 15. We'll start there. So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. So here we see Paul planning to go and do great exploits, do great works of God in Rome by preaching the gospel. Even Paul, when, when he thought about doing great exploits for God, doing a great work for God, it's just preaching the gospel. Now, it's no fancy stuff, it's no the bells and whistles that you hear about in certain uh, parts of Christendom today. It's just preaching the gospel. And, um, and to go and preach the gospel, Paul gives us a key here that you need to be walking in faith. Now Paul was a man that walked from faith to faith. In verse 16, it mentions, uh, verse 17 rather, for therein, speaking about the gospel, is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. So Paul was going to Rome in faith to preach the gospel. So Paul's gone from faith to faith. So he got saved by faith, and then he's going to faith to continue on to do great works for God. So if we want to continue on and do great works for God, we've got to continue in faith. So we go from a saving faith to then a faith that produces works and, and actions. So it's faith to faith. But you can go from faith to no faith, but you still go to heaven because you're born of the Spirit. But we ought to go from faith to faith if we're going to do great works. So, so I would say to, to walk in the Spirit, we need to be walking in faith. And um, as we look at some more scriptures, we'll see that walking in faith and walking in the Spirit are uh, like a hand in glove, they work together. So if you're walking in the Spirit, well, it's because you've got faith. If you've got faith, then you're going to be walking in the Spirit. So the, the, the enemy, the devil, does have a tactic against believers and against you and I to get us not going from faith to faith. Just because you get saved, the devil doesn't go, well, too late now, I'll forget about this person, I'll forget about Jason. He just wants you to go from faith back to the law, faith to flesh, faith to doing dead works, not faith to faith. Because if you go from faith to faith, you know, you're going to produce great works for God, you're going to be a soul winner, and you're going to do damage to his kingdom. So you might wonder, well, how can a Christian you know, not be effective to God? How can a Christian then go back to to doing works of the flesh. We'll turn to uh, Galatians chapter 5 again. Uh, now you go to Galatians chapter 3 and uh, verse 1. And while you're turning there, I'll read to you from Galatians 5, uh, 7 to 8. And that says, 
You did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. So as, as Christians, we can start to run well and then become hindered. But God would have us that we run well and go from faith to faith and keep on running well and not be hindered. But this persuasion does not come from him that calls you. So God doesn't want you to be hindered. He wants you to continue on faith to faith, running well and not to stumble and uh, fall and not do great works for God. So you're in Galatians chapter 3. And we can see that the, uh, the church in Galatia were having some problems of going, not, they weren't going from faith to faith, they were going from faith back to trusting in the law. So I should have put a, a bookmark in there. So Galatians chapter 3 verse 1, let me start, uh, start at yeah, verse 1. O foolish Galatians, who have bewitched you, that ye should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ had been evidently set forth, crucified among you. This only would I learn of you. Received ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are you now being made perfect by the flesh? Have ye suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? He that ministereth the Spirit, he that ministereth to you the Spirit and worketh miracles among you, doeth he yet by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? So in verse 1 there, he says, O foolish Galatians, who have bewitched you that you should not obey the gospel before whose eyes Jesus Christ had been evidently set forth, crucified among you. So that word bewitched is a stronger word than, say, what we might use deceived or, or misled. Bewitched speaks about like being under a spell. Like who has bewitched you? Who's put this spell on you that you're not obeying the gospel? And these were, were saved believers because we see in verse 2, it says, this only would I learn of you, receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. So they, had, they did start in faith. They had faith in, in the gospel and got saved and received the Spirit. But they, gone, they didn't go from faith to faith. They went faith back to the flesh, back to trusting in the law. And the result was, in verse 4, have ye suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? So any works... What they try to do, to do for God, their, their own righteousness, they were trying to establish by the law, it was all in vain. It didn't do them any good. So for us today, the application for us today is, is that we need to make sure that the works that we do are in faith. So you might say to me, well, how can a saved person filled with the Spirit not, how can they do works and not be pleasing to God? Well, I guess if you also, we also, if we're not careful, we can be bewitched and uh, believe a false gospel. Just say you started in faith, you believed the true gospel, got saved, and then you started listening to um, Calvinists on, Calvinism on, on YouTube and listening to different preachers that would say you have to repent of your sins, and, and they might say, well, if you really are saved, you'll have the works. So you think, oh, well, do I have the works? Well, I better go do the works to make sure I'm saved. So I might go and do some soul winning and, and um, go to church three times a week, and you're not doing that in faith anymore, you're doing it in your own efforts to try and prove to yourself and to, to God and somebody else that you're saved, okay? So your soul winning that you do, so-called soul, soul winning, it's not going to be blessed by God. It's going to be in vain. So you might suffer in the heat. You might suffer getting rejected and people throwing stuff at you, which never happens. Could happen, but hasn't happened yet. That's all going to be in vain because you're not doing it in faith. Therefore, you're not doing it in the spirit. And the gospel you're preaching is going to be a false gospel because you're believing a false gospel that you have to have works to prove that you're saved or you, you believe you have to repent of your sins to be saved. So therefore, you're not even going to be preaching the true gospel, are you? So you're going to be doing it in the flesh. So all soul winning done, all soul winning or so called that is done by, by um, false prophets. So you, you can be truly saved but just deceived. I'm not talking about, about those guys. But a false prophet say Paul Washer, or you might say Paul the Unwashed, okay, I've, I've heard him say this um, about his soul winning. I've heard him say it a few times now, so I'm not uh, misrepresenting what he said. He said to somebody, if somebody confesses faith in Jesus Christ, he would say to that person, what you need to do now is wait six months, I think it was six months or maybe nine months, something like that. You need to wait, say, six months and then if you've had works, if you had a changed life, you were saved. 
But if you see no change in your life, you need to realize you're not saved. And that's exactly what he said. So that's just dead works. That's not of the spirit. That's just, that's just ter like, terrible. So we need to make sure that when we do our, our soul winning, our works for God, we're doing it in faith. Okay? And as we walk in faith, we're going to uh, be people that walk in the spirit. Now, we know that the spirit is willing and the flesh is weak, so there's going to be times when we're not walking in the spirit like we would desire. And if we're, if we're uh, born again, but we're, we're walking after the flesh, you're going to find you're not going to be able to do the works that you want to be able to do. Okay, so just uh, turn back to Galatians 5. Uh, verse, verse 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and these are contrary the one to the other. And uh, check out this one here, this, this, bit, this bit here. So that you cannot do the things that you wish. So once, if you're walking after the flesh, you cannot do the things you want to do. You want to be a soul winner. You want to be effective for the gospel. You want to be a blessing to the kingdom of God, to the church. But if you're walking after the flesh, you can't do those things because you're not walking in the spirit. You don't have God's power, God's blessing to do those things. So turn, turn over also to uh, Romans chapter 7. And we can see Paul talk about this struggle within himself of him wanting to do good things for God but at the same time he knows that even though he's not in the flesh anymore he still has the flesh. So Romans chapter 7 verse 18 we'll start there. For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now, if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. So Paul still knows that in his body, there's still sin it dwells in that flesh, because he has the flesh still, in his body, so he knows that's where the sin comes from. We'll just keep reading. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. So the inward man is the born again man. So in the inward man, he delights in the law of God. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin and death, which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of death. I thank God for Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. So Paul knows that with him, in his body, still dwells the old man which, which sins. So Paul wants to do good, the new man wants to do good, but he sees this struggle. So if he's walking after the old man, after the flesh, he can't do that what he, that it, what he wants to do. So we need to realise we do have this inner struggle and we need to walk after the Spirit so we can achieve the things that we want to do for God. Okay, so I guess the question then is, if um, we need to be in faith to walk in the Spirit, then how do we get in faith? How do we start, start off in faith? So we already, already had faith to be saved and we need to go faith to faith in order to walk in the Spirit. So we know that... Um, Romans 10 to 17 says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So if we want to get, it, get ourselves into faith, the best way to do that is to hear the word of God, to read the word of God. That's why I think it's so important at the start of the day that you start the day reading the Bible, hearing the word of God, because that gets you in faith and sets your day on the right foot so that you can be walking in the spirit. And the, the more you, you walk in the Spirit, the more you, you read the Word of God, and the more you pray, the more you do those things, the stronger you'll get in faith, 
and the stronger and the easier it'll be for you to, to walk in the spirit and overcome come the flesh. So if we bring these disciplines in our lives, we're going to find that it's, it's much easier to overcome the flesh and walk in the spirit. Now, if we, if we don't start the day right by being in faith, in the spirit, you can quite easily miss out on great opportunities that God might have for you that day. If you turn over to, to Luke chapter 2, um, there's a really interesting story here about somebody who was walking in the spirit and had an incredible blessing. And um, if we want to just have the, the blessings that God wants us to have each day, we need to start the day in the word of God, hearing the word of God, and then walking in the spirit so that God can, can lead us where he wants us to go that day. So over in Luke chapter 2, we, uh, we read the story of um, a guy called Simeon. So Luke chapter 2, verse 25 And this is a great example of somebody walking in the spirit. And, and behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. So here's a man who's obviously a man of faith, uh, a man of the Word of God, and uh, he was being revealed to him by the Holy Ghost that he would not die until he saw Jesus Christ. Now, there came a, a time in his life where Jesus did come into the temple. In verse 27, And he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child, Jesus, to do for him after the custom of the law, then took he took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now let us thy, thy servant depart in peace according to thy word, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation. So the point I want to make here is if he wasn't being led by the Spirit on that particular day, he might not have been led into the temple. Okay, so that's why it's so important each day that you start the day in faith. Start the day walking in the Spirit because the Holy Spirit might want to lead you somewhere for a special blessing that day. He might want to lead you to meet somebody, give them the gospel, get them saved, and you want to be ready and able to do what God's called you to do. So this man, he was ready, he was in the temple, being led by the Spirit, and he met Jesus, and it was an incredible blessing. Now there's another uh, example in the Bible. If you turn to Matthew chapter 14... Uh, and in verse 24, we have the story of uh, Peter walking on the water. And uh, you can compare Peter walking on the water to us walking in the Spirit, but I believe it's a good comparison there. So Matthew chapter 14, verse 24 says, And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude... I oh, don't know. 20, that's, that's 14, sorry. 24... But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit, and they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. And when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand, caught him, and said unto him, O lo, of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? So that's a great story in the Bible, and I want to use it to illustrate how we can walk in the Spirit. First of all, um, Peter saw Jesus walking on the water and he said he had faith to say, Lord, bid me to come. So when he stepped out in, in faith, released his faith, Jesus gave him a word. He said, come. So he had a, a word from God to believe and to trust him. Just like us, when we read the, the word of God, we can believe it and then we can do it and we can walk in the spirit. So Peter, he heard the word of God, which was come, which was word from Jesus, 
And uh, when Peter was come down out of the water, he, out of the boat rather, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. So here's Peter in faith walking on the water. And that's what happens for us. When we have faith in the word of God, we can walk in the spirit. Just like walking on the water is physically impossible for a natural man to do. It's also impossible to, to walk in the spirit unless you're born again by faith. So by faith, we can walk in the spirit. But what happened to Peter was when he saw that the, the waves were boisterous, he was afraid. He was no longer in faith at that point. He was responding. He was more, had, more, more, he was, had more fear in his heart than what he had faith in, in the word of Jesus. So he began to sink into the, um, into the water. And that's what can happen with us. When, we, when we're in faith, we're walking in the water, and then it might not be natural waves, but it could be the, uh, the troubles of life. It could be financial issues, finance, problems at work. These sort of things can come against you and say, you know, we're going to destroy your life. You know, you're gonna, all these sort of things go into your mind. And if you start to, like Peter, respond in fear, you're going to find yourself not walking in the spirit. But to, to counteract those fears that can come, we need to stay in faith. Just like Peter, when he, um, he cried out, when he realised he was starting to sink, he cried out, uh, I'll just find it here, saying, Lord, save me, and immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him. So we need to, like Peter, when we realise that we're starting to sink down back into walking after the flesh, we need to, to view that as a serious thing. Okay, Just like Peter would have, like, physically drowned if he didn't call out to Jesus and Jesus didn't save him. If we walk after the flesh, there's going to be serious consequences. So I just want to read to you uh, from it's from uh, Romans 8 and 13. Don't turn there, I'll just read it to you. If we live after the flesh, you shall die. So as a born again person, if we just continue to live after the flesh, that's, we're going to die. We're not going to live the life that God wants us to live. But if you, through the Spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. So if we live in the Spirit, walk in the Spirit, we're going to live. We're going to live and, and complete the, the mission that God wants us to have. But if we live after the flesh, we're going to die. It's going to be cut short. Okay. So we need to realise when we're starting to sink back into walking in the old man, walking in the flesh, that that is a serious thing. And like Peter, we need to cry out in faith and say, Jesus, get me back into, into faith and back into walking in the Spirit. So just about, just about to close now, but I just want to look at a couple examples uh, from the Bible. Uh, we might uh, look at about examples of when somebody uh, was, was facing, faced with incredible sort of pressure um, and anxiety and, and stress and how they didn't give in to that but continued on in faith. So if you can turn to, to Acts chapter 20, we're going to look at Paul. And 23 to 25. And it says, And now behold, I go bound in the spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there. Say that the Holy Ghost witnesses or witnesseth in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. But none of these things move me, neither can I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. So Paul faced all these fears, all these pressures, like that people were saying to him, bonds and afflictions await you. So you're going to go to Jerusalem and you're going to be faced with all these severe afflictions and bonds. But look at Paul's uh, reaction here. He said, none of these things move me, neither count I myself my life dear unto myself. So Paul was saying, I'm not going to focus on those things. I'm just going to go there in faith and preach the gospel. So likewise, when we see all these pressures of life come in, trying to um, get us to walk in, in fear, we need to just stay focused on the word of God and, um, and keep moving forwards. And I just want to read to you, uh, no need to turn there, it's from 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 6. It's, it's the story when... Um, 
where David and his men were away talking to the Philistines and, um, and the Amalekites came and raided Ziglag where his uh, wife and, and children and, and the women were. And, uh, and David was greatly distressed because he returned to the, the city and it was all burnt with fire and his, his family and all the children were all taken away. And uh, I can imagine that's probably the most stressful situation you could just about find yourself in. Uh, and David was greatly distressed for the people spoke of stoning him because the soul of all the people was, great, was grieved. Every man for his sons and his daughters. But, and watch what David did here. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. So that's an incredible response to one of the most uh, trying circumstances you could ever face in life. David strengthened himself in God. So we need to be like David when we see the pressures of um, finances and, and life come against us. We need to strengthen ourselves in God and can t- continue on in faith and keep walking in the Spirit. So that's about all I wanted to um, share tonight. I don't want to go on for too long. But uh, I just wanted to look at that when we are born again, we are already in the Spirit. We, all, we are born, born in the Spirit, born of the Spirit. And then because we live in the Spirit, we should also walk in the Spirit. And the way that we can do that is by staying in faith, staying in the Word of God, and then we can do great exploits, preach the Gospel effectively in a way that's going to be pleasing to the Lord.